Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Southern T. It's your girl, Lady J, back bringing you, you know the usual, my commentary on the latest in human rap and urban news. So before I get into my video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, comment, share, and since you're here, subscribe to the channel, baby. So let's go ahead and get into it. I want to start off with Latte, aka Lotto, and Chloe Bailey. So Chloe released her single for the night the other night, featuring Latte, and it debuted at number 25 on the Billboard Bumbling Under. So congratulations or whatever to them let me know how you felt about the song now i thought latte said the new girls is flourishing okay like you know like i said when i first reported on this when chloe announced that latte was on the song i don't think it was a smart idea for miss bailey to put latte on this song simply because the barbs have not taken a foot up off a of little latte's neck child ever since she disrespected nikki last month on twitter okay they still dragging her so don't pick up the bitch okay so chloe was better off keeping little latte off the song and honestly she didn't even really need anyone else on the song in my most humble opinion she needs a strong solo single because she doesn't have one right now i don't know why these r&b girls feel like they can't stand on their own solo they stay trying to release a collaboration for a single and it's usually always a collaboration with a rapper and when they do half the time i just don't find it necessary like you were talented enough to ride your own wave and have your own solo song be successful you just gotta find it okay so i think it was a mistake for chloe to put latte on that song but hopefully she gets radio play or something from her label i don't know what it is with these r&b girls but the only ones killing shit right now to me is jasmine sullivan summer walker and our linux okay the rest are getting very much mid matter of fact put me on some of the new r&b girlies in the comments because i know r&b ain't dead these bitches just can't find their sound so let me know what you think below and child i don't know where the fuck no money is so i'm not even gonna mention no money okay moving on so so the next topic i want to get into is hot spice so apparently people are finding out that hot spice um signed to the label called 10k projects which is some um unknown ass label okay it has artists like trippy red and a whole bunch of other c and d listers okay so i checked their roster and i ain't heard of not one artist with the exception of trippy red and i ain't heard shit from him within the past year so she allegedly signed for about three million now the streets is saying that you know that is a bigger signing deal than what megan and cardi initially signed for because remember megan had to give like um or she had got like a 10k advancement which you really got to get back so i don't really know to much about 10k projects but i do know that they are the you know um you know under the universal umbrella so universal music group is the parent company of 20k projects 10k projects 5k projects whatever they want to call themselves now like i said a lot of the artists are unknown or at least not mainstream so i don't know what type of success hot spice will see with this label because none of their artists really seem to be getting pushed at all at the moment but maybe because of her viral song and success they might be you know willing to put some money in behind her give her a push and shove everybody else so hot spice might get a push since you know they put three million behind her and time will tell if she's in a 360 deal or not now i'm not really here for hot spice being one of the new mainstream rap girls i think she's a cute girl with a nice body and she seems like she would make a good influencer and maybe even do a reality tv or something like that but i just don't think rapping is it for your girl okay you know she might last a hot minute because she got a buzz now but unless she you know just all of a sudden has a stupid crazy fan base i don't think she will have much longevity in this rap game because as we see with latte sweetie megan and even cardi b they were hot their first two or three years mainstream and then them charge sales and numbers started looking funny okay and i mentioned cardi because she has yet to have a solo top 10 hit in almost two years but she swore last year on that record with lizzo that her records live in the top 10 and sis been featured on four remixes alone this year and dropped the song with two of the most hottest rappers in the game that made literally no noise for too long and you know it's been a left the charts it's been alone gone nobody talking about that song but let me know how you feel about hot spice making her own lane in the female rap game so the next topic i'm gonna slide into is lotto aka latte so latte previewed her new song on instagram the other day and within hours allegedly the barbs had leaked this song so the song was i think called like fuck the club up so some bullshit like that so i guess they said they're still dragging her so don't pick the bitch up okay so last week they leaked like over 40 of her songs and the other uh day they leaked you know this single so 
I don't know if Latte is still going to release this single or what, but if she do, I mean, I'm sure it'll go double brick because we already heard it, okay? We already heard half of your unreleased music, if not all of it. Latte is better off going back to the drawing board at with everything at this point, just scrapping all them songs that she had in a stash. You know, she can release them on SoundCloud or something like that, but I mean, it's not like any one of them songs had any real replay value or any substance. Like, if you ask me, it just sounded like a bunch of experience beer minute sounds like she just sounded forced on damn near every song so she can keep this song and every other song that leaked in a stash okay also she was throwing shots on this song like girl are you delusional she was throwing shots at Nicki Minaj like you already getting dragged daily by the barbs and you think it's still smart to attempt to diss the queen when your bars for one are not even up to par with hers for two you don't have a big enough fan page as hers to support this song and three do you not know that going against the queen is gonna cost your ass every time like I know you was a Nicki fan and you really still are a Nicki fan because I know you still got a burner account that you watch her from and listen to her music because you was using the lyrics of Super Freaky Girl in your captions whole time behind scenes. Y'all wasn't even really cool like that. So, you know, I know you know that Onika Voodoo hit different. Why you think all your music got leaked and you and Chloe on Billboard Bubble and Under at number 25, okay? So, it's not smart for a rookie to go up against the vet, okay? Your man 21 should have told Jazz that when he was clapping them cheeks. That's a rookie mistake. So, what Latte needs to do, in my opinion, is to go back to the drawing board with some new writers, some new music, because all her unreleased music has been released by the barbs, okay? And to worry about not getting caught up in public with 21, we all know that's your nigga, even though he married with three kids to his wife, okay? So, you know let you tell it and you just want to keep the internet out your business but want to put the internet in your business when it comes to issues you may have with Nicki Minaj okay that's interesting to me now what I really found interesting is yesterday it was speculated that Cardi B is supposed to be on this song with Latte which the song already sounds trash I don't know what Cardi B is supposed to be adding to this song I guess she's supposed to help with chart placement but Latte must not realize that Cardi does not currently have a solo single in the top 10 20 30 or 40 or anywhere on the billboard charts for that matter and she hasn't in almost two years so you should have rolled her wave back in like in 2020 like when Megan did because if y'all paying attention Cardi's hype has died down okay from what it was two years ago and we really haven't heard any solo music from cardi for almost two years and let's keep it a buck that's the real reason for her album delay cardi was supposed to bend came out with that album y'all remember she said back in 2019 she was done with it okay that was three years ago so it makes you wonder what her and her team are really waiting on or should i say who they waiting on okay so let me know if you check in for this song and what you think of this song and how you think it'll do like i said latte was throwing shots talking about security and protecting you or some shit and then you got cardi on the song so it's kind of alluding to the harper bazaar kind of thing and baby you ain't touching nobody okay so i don't think the song is going to be big or huge or like a wop moment because for one the beat and latte's voice and cadence over the beat is just it's not given in any way for me and while we on a subject can somebody tell me why cardi is hopping on every song except for her own okay let's get into it because first it was the shaky remix the no love remix the tomorrow 2 remix and then basically dropped her munch remix on instagram and now she want to jump on a song with latte okay so it's giving mad hoes link up okay since you couldn't get that nikki feature you decided to make sure you called up nikki's rival and ran your ass to belkalese because we know you sent mother three songs and she declined all them hoes okay after hearing all them songs by latte that got leaked on twitter i see exactly why nikki minaj declined those features okay all t all shade i don't know why cardi would want you know to be someone's alternate option either but you know it's all about fake female unity apparently so nikki can look like the bad guy the bitch the bully because last time i checked latte was just up at megan and stallion's hottie ween party all the kiki and up in her fucking face and spilling tea and shaking ass on each other meanwhile latte posted drake in 21's album and said she was in support of the album even after megan just went off on drake for the lyrics on one of the songs that was about her and as her so-called friend industry friend whatever you cool with the bitch you was a kiki in her face at her party how are you in support for something that upsets your friend but it's all about fake parties and fake agendas and shit like that okay nikki ben told us anyway let me know your thoughts on that below 
next topic I want to get into is Glow Rilla Going Go with her song Tomorrow 2 featuring Cardi. So congrats to Glow. This is her first Go single and of course it was her first top 10. So this is a big moment, special moment for Glow Rilla. Now her EP is dropping tonight and she teased um, a preview of a song from the EP. I think it's called Nut Quick. And, you know, by the title alone, when I first heard it, it just sounded a little bit underwhelming to me by the title. And when I heard the actual uh, snippet to the song, my suspicion was confirmed, child, okay? It's not given for me. Blessed was given. Tomorrow was cool. FNF was given. This shit ain't it. I'm gonna need Miss Glorilla, Hallelujah Woods, to choose another song to drop. But, you know, what I'm more so curious to see is if her internet support is going to align with her sales when her EP drops, okay? Because so many is riding her clitoris and being a kiki all up in her face and up under her comments. Will y'all support her first debut project is the question I need answers to, okay? And we just gonna find out. Because if y'all let Glorilla fly, it just proves y'all really don't be fucking with these rap bitches like that. Y'all just be clout chasing, okay? Pumping their heads up, call it what it is. And honestly, y'all big up these new rap girls and pump their heads up having them smelling their own asses and get to thinking they popping shit and then drop a single or an album and it goes brick, okay? Y'all did it with Koi, with Lotto, and Megan. And y'all can say, oh, first week numbers on everything. <laughs> shit, okay? Maybe not to you but they sure as hell can tell you a whole lot about an artist or in their fan base okay not many people was waiting on you to drop sis that's what the numbers can tell you okay not many people feel your music is worth buying sis that what the numbers can tell you okay because these bitches ain't trying to build up a solid fan base to me they too busy running around trying to chase the next hot second tiktok single like build a core audience okay they doing these surprise drops and same week drops as if they have a solid fan base and they don't okay so let me know your thoughts on that below and let me know if you are here for the gorilla's new project and will you be supporting now next i want to get into bia so bia was on instagram live and you know her fans were asking her some questions and one question in particular has to do with if she felt like rap has become more sensitive and this is what bia said like It's a good question. What's your opinion on sensitivity in hip hop nowadays? I think it's kind of limiting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's so limiting. And I think it's kind of whack because, like, rap used to be, like, like almost like comedy in a sense. Or, like, you could say certain things and, um, like, nobody can do anything about it. You just rap about it. Like, so I kind of like that. Sometimes I miss that a little bit. Like just listening to something that don't feel so watered down. And even me, like sometimes I'll be like, oh, should I say that? Should I not say that? But it's like, man, fuck it, just say it. Say what the fuck is on your mind. Like her loss is just so good. And they're not afraid to say anything. So I'm like, rap is so soft right now. Like everybody's so, so like, oh my God, like don't say that, don't say that, don't say this. So I just, I felt like, like, um, with the snippet that I posted, I really just wanted to like say what the fuck is on my mind. Like her loss. So let me know what you think. Personally, I kind of agree. You know, at one point in time, hip hop and rap was a way for artists to say what's on their minds and express themselves and how, you know, basically express themselves how they see fit and, you know, what's on their mind. And now things in hip hop is just, you know, it's way too political. Everyone is easily offended and rap is no longer being treated like a sport where there would be, you know, a natural competition. It's more like a political pool at this point. And I'm really kind of over it. And I agree with Bia. Now, as you heard, she went on to show her support um for drake and 21 savage album her loss and she pointed out how it inspired her to say what she feels or what she really wants to say and i can see how that can be true because even after some of the backlash drake got for his lines on that circle local song that people thought was about megan he did not come out and address it or publicly speak on it because what the fuck for i said what i said you interpreted it how you wanted to interpret it and that's the bar that he wanted to say so all you really can do is just not like it i'm not understanding why the extra shit gotta be added into the equation so biggie literally made a song called who shot you which was a diss towards Pac. i mean no vaseline by ice cube was lethal even remy maj sheather was brutal but you know people think drake is alluding to megan being shot and he has to get all this backlash 
you know i don't think it was a smart move for drake to you know do that slick ass play on the words but at the same time it's his craft who are we to go around demanding people to change their own shit so i'm sure megan and stallion isn't too happy with bia but i don't think they were really even cool like that to begin with but if megan ain't mad at jason lee when he done dragged her name through the motherfucking mud in regards to tory lanes and and why she was you know harmed i mean that nigga said she was shot because she was too drunk and being too mixy basically saying she brought it on herself that's what i got okay from him saying that but let me know what you think now speaking of bia she also teased a new song and it sounds pretty good the beat is cool and chill and her voice is so chill and laid back like it's a nice little vibe i really like bia's voice y'all bia and ruby rose have some nice six yes voices okay now i know ruby don't get you know she don't got half as much as a, a talent as bia because bia be pushing her pen but ruby got a chill sexy ass voice and so does bia so let me know if you are here for it now the next topic i want to get into is another one of the rap girls doing another sample okay so this time we got rico nasty sample of missy elliott's get your freak on okay so she previewed a snippet um on her instagram if you heard it let me know what you think now the other day i said i was tired of these rap females and these samples because a lot of them don't be doing the samples justice to me koi teased her new song which is a sample in grandmaster flash and furious fives 80s classic the message and it was wasn't given for me okay other people may have liked it thought it was a bop but it's because of the beat was already a hit back in the 80s okay i'm gonna give this one to rico though because the shit sounds fire i can get into this shit okay now i like rico nasty and i think she is talented and in her own lane um now i'm not a fan of every rico song or project but i can't deny her talent i definitely got some rico nasty songs in my playlist her latest album definitely has some bops on it so you know i'm here for this sample like i said i was feeling it when i heard it and i will be looking forward to it when it drops you know i don't think a lot of people really give rico nasty her flowers or give her the credit and respect she deserves because she was able to go into a punk rap lane as a female and be successful at it and i think that's dope so let me know what you think down below now my next topic i want to get into is jc and Nicki minaj so jc interviewed Nicki minaj for id magazine and i thought over a while it was a pretty good interview and i thought the magazine did a very uh, good write-up on Nicki and her success and impact on the music industry and more importantly highlighting her contributions to hip-hop and influencing a lot of these new rap girls whether they want to publicly admit that or not there is no denying it because it's evident in everything they do now Nicki minaj did say that the 15 thing was coming out soon and when JT asked her how she knew Super Freaky Girl would basically be the one, Nikki said that she knew the song would make people happy and that, you know, she just wanted to put out a fun song because it's been a while since she's done that. And that's true. And I think the last, like, fun song she did was, what, maybe Megatron. So she has had other fun songs like Anaconda and Starships and Super Bass, all of which have performed very well commercially. So it's evident that when Nikki is having fun, everything tends to fall in place and align with success. Now, what I really admired is when JT asked Nikki about why she put girls on the Super Freaky Girl remix who were not signed to a label. I thought it was cool that Nikki said that she just wanted to hear girls rap again because I believe JT and Bia are the only ones who were signed on that remix while Malibu Mitch, Katie Got Bands, and Akbar are independent artists. Especially, you know, when people claim that Nikki don't work with anyone who isn't signed or that Nikki don't work with other talented female artists because it's obviously not true and it's a narrative they push to fit their own agenda. Now, some things were brought to light by both JT and Nikki that, you know, kind of had me, you know, like, okay, this makes more sense looking back on certain situations. For example, we all know that time when JT was in her car and did that little freestyle rap diss, whatever you want to call it, um, towards Nicki Minaj for whatever reason. But come to find out, JT admitted that she thought, you know, that she knew Nicki when she didn't in reality. And, you know, that she was a delusional girl who had a love-hate relationship with Nicki Minaj in her own head because they both knew how to rap. And those are her own words, y'all. Like, she called herself de delusional. So, JT went on to admit that, you know, it was heartbreaking for her to see Nicki go pop as a girl from the hood which i'm sorry that just sounds fucking weird to me like what the entire fuck 
I mean, I don't understand, you know, I, I mean, I understand, you know, you feel in some type of way of your fave artist, you know, doing, you know, different music that you're not really into, you know, you really don't got to pay it no mind, pay it to dust, don't really paying attention to it, you know, fans don't always like everything their fave artist does, however, to be upset, like real life upset to where you have a love-hate relationship because an artist is elevating or crossing over, it gives delusional vibes, babe, because it's not that serious, so she was right to call herself delusional after JT said this you know I was kind of side eyeing her a bit because if you once had those feelings before who's to say you can't feel those feelings again okay because Nikki really hasn't been deep in her pop bag since 2012 2013 so what if she does have a few pop songs um a few pop songs on the next 15 thing okay would you go back to those old feelings and begin your delusional love hate relationship with her in your head all over again like now Nikki did give her flowers to Wayne Jay and Foxy because you know as a barb those are her musical inspirations as well as Lauren Hill and I also liked how Nikki said she basically isn't scared to speak up for herself because she is at the point in her career you know where she feels like her fans aren't going anywhere and I think that is absolutely true Nicki Minaj literally has one of the if not the hardest and most supportive fan base of the music industry and definitely the largest out of all the female rap girls so even you know and even if the industry you know was attempting to blackball her she could still thrive because her fans are still buying and streaming her music now Nikki also said that she is considering a press on nail company which I think will actually be a pretty lucrative industry it's an industry that's on the rise especially in the event of a glam or nail emergency where cute ass press ons can literally get the job done and save the day because I just experienced a situation like like that the other day from Walmart child and press on they'll save my life but not for real I think you know it's smart and I also think this is different because you know all the girls want to sell hair do makeup lashes or clothes and it's kind of saturated so I think it's different and I think her nail line would be very successful to the point of being the nail version of Kylie Cosmetics or even Fenty because like I said I don't know any female music artists in this industry as it pertains to the nails like doing press on nails but like I said overall it was a dope interview and Nikki looked amazing and her photo shoot she did with ID magazine so you guys can let me know your thoughts on the interview below and let me know what you thought of JT calling herself delusional and claiming to have had a love-hate relationship with Nikki because she went pop is you know speaking of ID magazine my last topic I want to get into is Coyle Larray so Coyle um she also had a little ID magazine interview so when she was asked what it's like being a female artist in the industry she said it's important that everyone come together and stay together and bring peace because she said it's a lot of beef going on right now mm. and she also said that you know female artists or rappers need to come together and stop the re the re raw 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 whatever the fuck that is and she also said that you know she is the best marketer in the world which is a damn lie because out of all the female rap girls i think sweetie definitely got you be at marketing you know you might she, she might suck at rapping and that's cool but you know she damn sure can market herself and her brand so you know she also said that no other artist is seeing her when it comes to content on their social media which is a goddamn lie to me there's not anything unique or different about coil's social media account okay on twitter she cries and argues with trolls on instagram she posts half naked videos and her tiktok single dancing videos she'll go live and talk about nothing so i'm confused on what she means there what content the only thing i agree Agree with you know that she said during this interview this entire interview was that people could use the internet to the best of their ability to make money especially being an entrepreneur which I agree with because an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur it's way too many ways to make money online these days whether you want to do it as a side hustle or full time okay that I agree with there is content creation podcasts e-commerce stores using the internet to sell a skill cryptocurrency like it's just so many routes you can take to make an extra buck so I agree with her there but when she said the internet loves her I had to laugh because she was the same one who only a few short months ago was crying talking about a hate train that must have already had left the station because bitch what hate train okay now Koi also said that something she loves about her music is that her melodies harmony and versatility is why she wins every single time 
I'm gonna need her to define winning because by winning do you mean charting and selling okay because your debut album did not chart too well okay and it did not sell too well it did double brick in sales because 11,000 first week baby that's disappointing okay come on now it peaked at number 89 on the billboard album 200s okay or the billboard 200 which is the most popular music albums I mean Michael Jackson's thriller is currently sitting at number 19 on billboard 200 and where's Koi's album hmm I'm just putting things into perspective for you. That's all. And then she went on to speak on loyalty, which is, you know, kind of shocking to the shit out of me because Nicki Minaj stayed up in the freezing cold with you and her husband and her child until the wee hours of the morning to shoot the video for Blick Blick. The fact that she co-signed you and bigged up you and stuck up for you when the internet was dragging you, we thought she would be loyal to her, but what did you do? You got caught talking shit because she released We Go Up Too Soon for you after collaborating with you, but loyalty is everything to you okay chat okay so koi also said that her biggest influences are lady gaga missy elliott summer walker chief key pharrell and lil Durk, which is interesting because just a few months ago when you was up in nikki's face in her live she was one of your biggest inspirations like bitch it's 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 giving sympathy it's it's giving pick a side so i just thought this interview was full of a bunch of shit i ain't even gonna lie that's my most humble opinion you know koi she say she ain't here for the rap beef and shit but you was the one talking shit and you was the one throwing subliminal shade on twitter just last week okay so i just feel like none of this was genuine but you know kudos to her for being in her bag with this interview or whatever i guess fake it till you make it child whatever let me know your thoughts on that below so remember this is my commentary and my opinion you can let me know yours below i look forward to reading your thoughts don't forget to give this video that thumbs up hit that subscribe button lounge with your girl on instagram and twitter at my new handles at southern t i will see you in the next video